Let's take a close look at cascading style sheet rules, what they are, how to set them up. And I've got some code already here. And by cascading style sheet rule, it's just an individual style. So that's a rule, that's a rule, and that's a rule. And for a CSS rule, they split into three parts. There's the selector, the property, and the value. So that's the selector, that's the property, and that's the value. For the selector, it's just the HTML you want to change. Property, it's uh, what you want to change about the HTML. So we want to change the color of the H1 heading there. And for the value, it's obviously the value that uh, you want in to change it to. Uh, for properties and values, you need for properties and values they go between two curly brackets, a left one and a right one. And after the property, you need a colon and end the line with a semicolon. And for these curly brackets, you can either keep them on one line or you can have them on more than one line. It's up to you. Let's go back to the selector. For selectors, the three different types of selector. There's the HTML selector, which that one is. Now for HTML selector, it's just the tag without the pointed brackets. So we should see if you remove these. Uh, I can get that with the pointed brackets there. We could change that, for example, to P for paragraph, or L for order list. But it's just the tag without the pointed brackets for Class selectors, it's a customized style if you like, and they start with a dot, and then you need a name for your class selector, and you can come up with anything you want really. We've called that with big font. But you can't start with a number, so you couldn't start say with number 44, and you can't have spaces either, or an underscore character, you couldn't have that. And for the ID selector, they start with a hash pound symbol. And again, you come up with any kind of name for it. And for the difference between the two, class selectors and ID selectors, for a class selector, you can use them anywhere and as many times as you want. But for an ID selector, it's supposed to be an individual, um, individual style, if you like, a unique style. So for example, um, you could have a text box on the form and you could give it a unique ID. So there's all the different kinds of selectors. Now let's have a look how to apply them. I've got some code down here. So we've got the H1 heading already in place and you don't need to do anything else because this style here it'll apply to all H1 headings on the page. So you just need to type the tag for H1 and it will change the color to red. But for a class and ID selectors, you do need to do something. So I'll take a space there, and you start with the word class, and an equal sign, and then quotation marks, and then just the name of the style. It's a big font. And that's enough to change this paragraph to 34 points. Let's have a look at that uh, in the browser. Let me refresh that one. See the heading's already red. And there we go. 34 points for the first paragraph. For the ID, it's just it's, it's just the same. So we've got an ID there. And it equals quotation marks and whatever it's called, font style. Let's copy and paste that one. One. And that's enough to apply the style there. ID equals font style. Okay, let me save that. We go back to the browser and there we go it's changed it to bold and with a different font so that's css rules hopefully you'll get the hang of them